I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads and let's do some Spookopoly rolls. I apologise if you can hear Mr Neighbour Cat um, but he had a really busy night last night. He stole some chicken. Not from us. I don't know where. We <laughs> so last night there was a really weird noise coming from the back garden and I was like oh is that Mary? Is he, is he, on, is he having a fight? Is he having an argument? And no, he was just happily chomping on like slices of chicken that he had brought into our garden, living his best life with stolen chicken. I don't know where he got the chicken from. It wasn't from us. His owner is vegan. <laughs> wasn't from her. He he took some chicken from somewhere and brought it like this. It was like half the size of him. Brought it to the safety of our garden and sat being yum 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 living his best life so now he's just sleeping away sleeping off his chicken stolen chicken it's just so cute um spookopoly let's do some rules i checked the rules because my first rule of spookopoly i dnf'd the book after three pages record for me but i checked the rules and i don't see anything about what happens if you dnf and i did read another book that i felt kind of fit the prompt so i'm gonna just go with it move on with my life and hope there's no penalty that I've missed but I feel the penalty really surely is having to read three pages of a book I didn't like so I will add on my role I've already filmed it I know what they are so I'm gonna share that and then chat to you about what I'm gonna read let's do spook up a thon rule two I don't have my tripod let's hope for the best I have not had the best that is a double and that is two So I'm going to go and double check what that means. I'm going to risk it and roll again instead of picking two books because I don't know. I'm feeling daring or silly. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> um, right. So that's, that's six. So that's two books. And then another two books? Is this four books? Oh no. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have a poll. That's fine. I will do an Instagram story poll for my next two books. I think I went into this with like faith in my ruling abilities. That was swiftly erased by my actual ruling abilities. I ruled a double. And in my wisdom, I was like, I'll just roll again. Instead of reading two books for the same prompt, I should have just picked two books because I rolled another double. Then I did pick two books. So first up, I am going to be reading My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones, which is currently downstairs. I'm halfway through this book and I want to read it. I want to finish it. So I feel that this is perfect for this prompt. Um, for my second prompt, I'm going to do an Instagram poll of which book to read and the two with the most number of votes are the two I will read. So I don't know what I'm going to be reading for my second prompt but it will be one of, I'll, I'll put it here, of the four options that I'm going to be sharing. Clearly I'm in the mood for either chaos or darkness, like dark academia, so I'm kind of okay with whichever of these two books I end up reading. I really want to read all four of them. And yeah, I'll be back with updates and also let you know what the results of the poll were so that you know what I'm reading. Although I will add pictures of them to the thumbnails. There's no mystery. Let's make some apple and blackberry compote. Uh, no, this is very out of date. Nope. This is also out of date. So no. <laughs> Uh, 
I am a little bit, for, for lack of a better phrase, I'm a little bit bedraggled today and, and shiny because I have been achieving. I, I've just been achieving. I have finished, A, I have finished My Heart is a Chainsaw and I made my compote. I, one of my autumn goals was that I wanted to make an apple, a spiced apple compote to go on porridge. There was no real reason other than it sounded delicious and it felt seasonally appropriate. And I did that. It was even more delicious than it, I thought it was going to be. I actually had some blackberries that were very short dated. So in they went. There was no recipe. A lot of my cooking, I, I do follow a recipe, but then I kind of go off track <laughs> sometimes. So my apple compote, I just peeled and chopped up. A whole bunch of I went for pink lady apples because I had pink lady apples I sauteed them just heated them in a pan with a tiny little bit of water just so that they didn't stick and I popped it in a cinnamon stick and then I just popped the lid on left them for a good 10 minutes or so then I added some blackberries and a selection of spices that I felt seemed seasonal so I went with ginger I already had cinnamon in there and I think I put allspice in I wanted to put nutmeg <laughs> however my nutmeg expired in 2019 so I didn't put the nutmeg in I thought about it I had another nutmeg that went out of date slightly later but still like <laughs> like 2022 or something um, there are some spices that I use regularly and they get used, they get replaced. Like paprika, that's never expiring. They're like, you're getting used up. Chili, oh, you haven't a hope of expiring. But things like nutmeg, I use nutmeg maybe when, like Christmas. I use it Christmas and sometimes in autumn. So that kind of, yeah, it was expired. My compote, an absolute taste sensation delicious on porridge like i thought it would be so i recommend i recommend making some just chuck stuff in a pan leave it for 20 minutes it'll be great mush up delicious on porridge and yes i finished my heart is a chainsaw by stephen graham jones i don't believe i actually said what this book was about it's a an homage to the slayer genre jade our main character is a kind of out outcast <laughs> shall we say and she is obsessed with slasher movies and horror as a genre and she becomes somewhat obsessed with local goings on and thinks that there is going to be an incident in her hometown and looks to prevent it by finding a final girl in the form of uh, a new transfer student and she just kind of learns more about the town and the horrors of Proof Rock which is where she lives. I started reading this book in August, August, <laughs> and I really liked the first hundred pages that I read. I kind of liked Jade as a character. I thought that she just didn't really care what anybody thought about her and I really I kind of respect that in a character. She had this huge interest in slasher films which you know great genre films to love but I don't think this book was for me. I feel like this is kind of like a Marmite book in that you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. I kind of love Marmite in real life though. <laughs> this didn't work for me. I did like Jade as a character. I liked the way that she sort of linked everything back to some sort of slasher film. Really enjoyed that. I had previously read The Last Final Girl and I loved it because it was like a transcript, a, a play if you will. And I feel like this book was written in a very similar way just minus the stage directions which led to it being quite disorienting. There were moments where we would jump from one scene to another and it wasn't overly clear until you're halfway through the next paragraph that, oh, we're, we're moving on to something else. I think this book would be spectacular in a, an adaptation, a film adaptation or a TV adaptation. I think it would work on a screen 
but I feel like the way that it was written was very jarring and I found it a little bit difficult to keep track of what was real and what was not. There was a sort of grand reveal that really annoyed me in this book. It's kind of my pet hate in fiction to use a certain plot device. I feel it's very lazy storytelling. Um, if you know me, you know what plot device that will be, but I don't want to spoil the book by, by giving that spoiler. I just feel like there were trigger warnings that were not provided for this book that really should have been. Obviously, it's an homage to the slasher genre. There's going to be certain things you expect from the book, but there were some things that I did not expect and was kind of disappointed that they featured in the book. I just felt like it was such a cop out. <laughs> a different a different rationale could have been used and it would have just been so much more enjoyable. I thought I liked this book and then the more I thought about it, the more I thought I don't like this book. So I've actually talked myself down from a three star to a one. <laughs> um, but I still really liked The Last Final Girl. I just feel like there was something about this book that it just, the style of it didn't do it for me. But again, I feel this would be such a good, a good adaptation to make for, for a screen. It just didn't work for me as a book. And there's, there's more books in this series, but I will not be continuing <laughs> with the series. And I feel like this kind of seems like this video is off to a bad start, but I don't think it is. We've got Compote. We've finished a book that I've been reading since August. I'm still taking this as a win. I've also found that there's a series I don't want to continue with. Winning all round. I have the results from my Instagram poll of what I'm going to read next. I'm definitely going to be reading. I'll pop the results up here. The next book is going to be My Husband by Maud Ventura. And this book is, I've heard this book is a little bit unhinged, which if it is, I'm so here for that. This book is about a woman who is very much in love with her husband. So, so much. And she starts to worry that perhaps her husband doesn't love her quite to the same extent that she loves him. And then we go from there. I'm so excited about this book. I have this in audiobook, so I'm going to listen to it while I do other things and just enjoy it. It's very short, so I'm, I don't know, I'm really excited, but I'm kind of like, it's so short. It's only like five hours. I then am unsure what I'm going to read next because I had a tie for my second book and I think, I think I'm going to almost mood read. So when I finish, my next book, if this book is as unhinged as I hope in my wee heart that it is, then I'm going to read All the Devils because that's dark academia and I'm, I'm excited about all of these books actually, but this book is a little bit different. Whereas if I don't get the unhinged chaos that I so desire right now, then I'm going to read Perfume and Pain. I think that's a good thought process, I think. We're still on a good track. I will report back when I have updates from my next read and maybe a less shiny face. I'm so excited. <laughs> think we might have found a new favourite. Maybe. Uh, so I went on a walk, took it myself outside for some fresh air, went on a walk. We have a little free library, not super near, but it's near the university, totally walkable. So I took a stroll to go and see if there was anything, anything, you know, that caught my eye. Took a bunch of books to leave in exchange there weren't any books that I wanted, which I've never gotten anything from that library. And it's like 90% books I've left. So I don't know if maybe it's not being used anymore. Maybe I found it like maybe the person who set it up has left. I don't know. But 
Either way, I took a walk. No new books, but I did unhaul a little stash and I'm okay with that. I then, like I said, I think I found a new favourite book. I also painted my nails again and instantly chipped one because that's who I am. Chip my nails. That's okay. I finished My Husband by Maud Ventura. I loved this book. It was what, this is what I wanted. Chaos. I wanted an unhinged main character, unhinged female main character. And I wanted to be left at the end of this book going, what did I just treat? And that's exactly what I got. I got everything I wanted. I have seen a review that says that if you just read the first, like the introduction and then the epilogue of this, of this book, you get the entire vibe of the story. And I suppose like you get the most, like the, the meat of the story, but you don't get the seasoning. <laughs> there's, there's all of these little sprinkles that I feel are so important. The book takes place over the spell of a week and we just have our unnamed main character and her little lists. She makes lists of infractions her husband has made and penalties that he must pay such as he he will not get cuddled because he didn't kiss her good night um and i'm like i'm sorry i, I, would, I would wake my partner to kiss me good night no there will be good night smoochies because of course there must be i <laughs> loved just reading her sort of trying to rationalize her behavior that was no unnamed main character that's not that's not how, that's not how love and couples interact with each other. You don't keep a list. You don't, you don't keep a list of being, of his like crimes. And I just loved it. I loved the chaotic energy of this main character and her just absolute lack of self-awareness. She was just obsessed with her husband and she loved him so much, but she just wanted to test him to make sure that he loved her just as much. But just oh, oh chaotic there was a moment where she just could not get over a, a parlor game at a dinner party they were dining with some friends who again there's competition with friends there's competition with everybody and her husband is asked what fruit would your wife be and he picks a clementine oh she doesn't want to be a clementine raging at being called a clementine so of course I had to ask my boyfriend, what what fruit would you associate with me? And see if I feel any sort of sense of anything about that answer. And he went with peach. Then we giggled because we were mature adults. And then he went with a berry. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, I, I see myself as a berry. That tracks. Um. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm happier with a berry but it was just so silly it was such a small a small little thing and I was like you you okay you okay over there no I don't read a lot of like marital thrillers not something I'm really I don't have any interest in at all there's nothing wrong with them I'm sure just I don't feel myself drawn towards them so I was kind of nervous going into this but this isn't as much of a marital thriller as just a hey hon are you okay thriller and no she's not <laughs> I really like the way that she was like trying to like claw at being in control while simultaneously losing control and while I have no desire to spend any time in her presence <laughs> I really liked her as a character. I thought she was really interesting, even though she was very, very focused on, I love my husband. My husband is my existence. And somewhat resentful towards her children needing attention because they are children. I really liked her as a character. So interesting, so multifaceted and chaotic. This book gave me everything I wanted and I'm delighted. It was super short. I feel it was the perfect length. I think it could have obviously gone on for longer, but I think that would have ruined some of the magic. This needed to be the short, punchy story that it was. And I had a fantastic time with it. I 
love a chaotic main character. I love a little bit of female angst. And so for my next book, I don't want to go with Perfume and Pain because I think that's a similar vibe to this story. And I want to just let the story like marinate in my memory <laughs> a little bit longer. So I'm going to go with All the Devils by Caitlin Wilson. That's going to be my next pick. That is a dark academia story surrounding a young girl called Andromeda. She goes by Andy. Her sister Violet has sadly passed away at this prestigious boarding school but Andy doesn't think that everything is quite as straightforward as it seems so she goes to the boarding school to try to find out what happened and finds herself sort of unearthing all of these secrets and kind of culty goings on and that sounds like something I would really really enjoy so I think that's going to be my next pick but my husband perfect I love this book and I will be rereading this again I think I want to get it in paperback because I like having paperbacks of my favourite books and I think this is gonna be it's gonna maybe oh oh is it gonna make it to my favourites of the year list I don't know there's a lot of books on that list and I'm already dreading whittling that down to a more manageable number but I think there's a very good chance that this could at least make it to my honourable mentions and that's not something to be sniffed at. I loved it. I do feel it's a bit of a Marmite book. Again, is that the theme for this video? Marmite? <laughs> because I have friends who I know will hate this book. They will hate the main character. They will hate her chaotic energy. They will hate her manipulative nature. But I also have friends who are like, please, pass me the book that sounds fantastic I feel like my husband had a very similar nature to death of a bookseller I I won't show my working but I feel I feel like the main character in my husband was a very polished put together version of Roach just in terms of obsession and of convincing yourself of of something when something is not there and is not necessarily the case. I ah, spectacular. No notes. Loved. I gave this five stars. I don't think that that will surprise anybody. <laughs> but on to the next book. I'm excited for some dark academia. It's raining outside. What a perfect day to read something a little darker. <laughs> I, I, I've not finished All the Devils, but I'm finished with All the Devils. This was my, I had the choice. I had the choice between Chaos or Dark Academia, but the Dark Academia was YA Dark Academia. My favourite Dark Academia is usually kind of more of a university age group. So I don't know if that's my fault maybe. Either way, I am DNFing this book. I made it to 53% through the book and I just found I, I didn't care where the book was gonna go. I felt that, again, I'm on the squeaky floorboard, I felt like the pace of the book started to pick up around halfway through but by that point it had I felt dragged on and I was just left so dissatisfied that I felt no matter what happens in the last half of the book it was never going to be three stars or more for me and I thought do you know what you're not invested enough you ultimately don't really care what happens DNF I gave it a fair shot and I'm trying to be better <laughs> at not sticking with books out of a sense of obligation. What I liked about the book was the, the cryptic notes from Andromeda, Andy's sister, to try and lead her to find out what truly happened to Violet. I liked those notes. I liked that sort of investigation. I liked that she teamed up with Jay. And I really liked the sort of mythology elements of this book. It kind of bugged me the way that a lot of different 
myths were interspliced together but maybe you know maybe that will be explained later in the book I'll never know I won't get there what I disliked was I disliked a lot of the characters which is a kind of big part of an, the enjoyment of a book I felt like Andy was just so immature she was 17 and and an, in a YA book you have to give grace for child characters having moments of being childish but I felt that for a 17 year old she felt very immature and it could be she had led a sheltered life but we know that she kind of had life experiences that a lot of her character didn't make sense she was extremely passive and I find that quite dull in a main character the side characters were more interesting than the main character the the villains if you will pantomime level villains and just I nah no <laughs> no interest in them at all this is my friend Mary he is handsome the phone shut off I feel like my phone was passive aggressively telling me to stop talking because it just shut off it said there was no storage left and there was there was storage left so Mary and I just had um a mild panic where I had to get my boyfriend to come and look at my phone my phone is fine um I don't think it's in the spirit of Spookopoly to stick with a book that you're not loving just for the sake of what, that, an arbitrary tick on a made-up list no so I'm okay with the DNF we're gonna do another roll move on with our lives that that's it deal I will include my next roll in another future video but for now I'm gonna go and get some lunch because I'm really hungry let me know what you've been reading lately thank you so much for watching bye